Hello and welcome to a new video about using open source software to create path to mill certain things on the CNC. Up until now I've been using almost entirely FreeCAD. It works great when you are, such as I am, a woodworker and want to make pockets, want to make joints. It's a very useful tool, it's very easy to set dimensions, it's very easy to use parametric designs, but for certain things FreeCAD just isn't able to do what I need to do. One of these examples is working with meshes. I have this mesh of a seahorse in a tray and if I wanted to mill it in FreeCAD it would just take a couple of hours on my computer which isn't the best but also isn't the worst it would take me hours to just process this STL this mesh when trying to work with this little project in FreeCAD it's a huge amount of time it didn't finish calculating the job so I had to force close it and move back to Blender which I know works it also takes some time but for this tray it takes less than two minutes to generate a path. I will introduce you to how I use Blender. I'm not a Blender expert, I know almost nothing about Blender. At a certain point I had to move to Blender because I wasn't able to get the job that I needed to do. I wasn't able to make it in FreeCAD so I had to find another solution. Blender combined with a Blender Cam add-on was the perfect solution. So I will close for now this file and start over and I will show you how I mill this kind of shapes on my CNC using Blender. This is the layout you should have when installing Blender for the first time I used Blender 4.1. Maybe some of you might already know how to use Blender. Now let's just open a new file, a general new file. Here we have a camera, a cube and a light. What I don't like about this layout is that everything is very small. So let's go to edit menu, preferences, go to interface and here I have a resolution scale. I will turn it up to 1.4 and now everything is larger I might have to resize certain things from time to time but you can easily see everything and it's much better now let's take a quick look at how to install blender cam if you don't have it go to the add-ons tab if I search for blender cam you can see there's nothing in here I have to go to blendercam.com click on the download button and you will download a zip file go to edit preferences add-ons click on the install button go to where you downloaded the file search for the downloaded file blendercam.zip click on install add-on and now you can see it here just one more thing that you need to do click on this checkbox to enable it and now let's take the stl2 mill it on the cnc i have somebody that wants that exact model so i will go to file import stl and select the file the seahorse tree you can see it here it seems very small but if i go to scene to units i can see that the length is set in meters i will change it to millimeters and then select this button from overlays and i will modify the scale it's now in meters i need it to be in millimeters so it's 0.001 and now I can close this drop down. You can now see it's in centimeters, which are subdivided in millimeters. If I need to scale the model, I have a little arrow here or press the N key. And I have transformations here, location, rotation, scale, actual dimensions. So it's pretty easy to modify. Let's say I want to make it double. I will go to scale, set two on each of the axes. And now press N again to hide the menu the tree is twice as big now let's revert it back to one for scale of one but if i want it to be 200 millimeters wide let's say i have a board which is 200 millimeters i will write here 200 millimeters and copy the scale from x paste it onto y and z and now press n again to hide the menu everything is proportional and my object is 200 millimeters wide now let's revert it back to a scale of 1, press N to hide, it's N to show and N to hide this man with transformations. If you want more ways to work with 3D shapes, you should search for some special Blender tutorials. I'm just going to cover the Blender Cam add-on. Sometimes I believe it's much powerful than FreeCAD for certain things. So I will be using it a lot and I will be showing you how to use it. So I will select the object. I will go here to the render button and instead of EVE render engine, 
I click on it and here I have Blender Cam. You can see a lot of drop downs here. Let's take them one by one. Here is interface. You have basic, advanced, completed and experimental. I like to use complete. I have a lot of options. The experimental ones sometimes work, sometimes don't. Since we are going to make only one operation, the cam chains is not going to be covered today. Here I have cam operations, the third drop down. Let me close the first ones. I can use a preset, of course, but I'm not familiar with them. So I'll hit here the plus button, add new cam operation. You can see it here, op seahorse tray underscore one. I have two buttons, calculate path and export G-code and simulate this operation. For now, I won't be using this because we have to make a lot of settings. So let's close this tab this cam operations here the fourth one is cam info and warnings it's a version of blender cam i have info that there's a new version available i will install it for the next video the next tab is cam material size and position most of the times it's okay to use estimate cut area from the model but i can also uncheck this button and just set some manual dimensions if i have a piece of wood which i have measured and i have those dimensions i can write them here And you can see there is a wireframe representation of the material but I generally use estimate cut area from model which is the equivalent of model bound box in FreeCut. I have an additional radius which is not a radius but rather an offset. You should take uh, into account that it's only on the X and on the Y it's not on the Z. I can also center the object on the X and the Y just check these two boxes and click on position object you can see it moved here uncheck and check again the estimate cut area from the model to update the bound box but i don't like to center them because it's pretty difficult to set the origin of a cnc machine in the center of the table i have a positive x and a positive y on my cnc so i'll place the material here i can place it below above or centered on the Z axis. For now, let me tell you that the best placement is below. That's what I found very useful. The best placement for the object is below Z, especially when making water lines below is the way to go. So after positioning the object, I've set it in the origin below zero. So when going to the machine, I will set the zero on the top face of the piece of wood. The cam operation setup is the most important part because this is where I tell Blender what to do. The number of axes depends on the machine. You can see four and five axes are still experimental. So I will leave it on three axes. That's the way my machine is anyway. For milling this seahorse, I will go with a parallel strategy with a distance between tool path of 0.2 millimeters and angle of path of 90 degrees but that's just because my machine is sturdier on the x-axis than on the y-axis and less vibration will leave a much smoother finish i have a lot of other options here which i won't be using today so after setting the strategy to parallel the distance of 0.2 millimeters a lower distance means much more passes which will take a longer time but will result in a smoother finish in the cam optimization tab i leave everything as is except that i check the use open cam lib and simplify g code with the default tolerance of 50. this makes everything much faster when calculating the path and simplified g-code will result in a smaller file the cam operation area is where the cutter will move the first option is use layers i can check it or uncheck it if you check the use layers you will enter here the layer height which is the step down in other softwares the operation depth start i can modify it but i will leave it to zero because the object is placed from zero down the free movement height depends on the setup that i have on the machine maybe i have clamps maybe i have some different things that the cutter head might collide the set max depth can be set from the object from the material which will take into account the depth uh, the height of the material or a custom max depth which i set manual i will just go with the object the ambient i can set it all 
which means it will mill the entire object or around. Around means it will stay inside a certain radius around the object. If I set this radius to 1 mm, Blender will make sure that the cutter head won't pass further away from the object than 1 mm, which is set here. Of course, if I have cutter stays in ambient limits. Uh, if I don't check it, it will simply ignore all the settings up here. So let's leave it like this. I will close the operation area tab. Now going to the cam movement, I have let me just make this larger. I have three types of movement, which is conventional up milling, climb down milling and zigzag. I won't get into those details. The spindle rotation, I have to set it because depending on this, it will move from one direction to the other or reverse depending on the rotation of the spindle. Here I have a free movement height setting, which I already had in the cam operation area you can see they modify together stay low if possible is a very useful tool but which for now is in experimental mode i will leave the merge distance experimental you can see here a um, big warning i will leave it to zero because i've tried higher values they work okay they reduce a lot of air time but from time to time the cutter head would move through the belly of the poor seahorse and i don't want to see that so let's leave it to zero let's close the cam movement and here i have another drop down the cam feed rate i will set it to 3000 the plunge speed as a percent is the speed of the z-axis you can see here is 50 percent which means the z-axis will go down with 1500 millimeters per minute i tend to use it with the same feed rate my machine can handle that and i have one more setting here plunge angle which is 30 degrees if you hover it for a lot of these values you can hover them and you get some details that are very useful to understand what each thing does the plunge angle as you can see it's what angle is already considered to plunge so any angle lower than 30 degrees to the vertical will result movement with a plunge speed the spindle rpm of course it's the spindle rotation i like to use higher values 18,500 the cam cutter is the cutter head here i have some presets i can use a ball cone of one millimeter but the cutter v curve angle for my cutter bit is 10 degrees it's a very pointy bit six millimeters the shank diameter and the radius at the tip is one millimeter below all the settings for the cutter head you can see some very useful information which is cutter engagement it means how much of the cutter head is engaged for each pass it can also be translated as step over in the next tab the g code options i have output g code header and output g code trailer here i use m052 to stop the spindle otherwise the g code generated by blender won't stop the spindle on a grbl machine when ending the program i don't have hold down commands i don't have any other commands so i'll just leave the gco trailer for m05 close the gco options and go to the final tab that we are going to cover today the cam machine let's assume it's the first time that we are working in blender post processor of course grbl in my situation you can select a lot of other processors for different machines depending on what you have the uni system of the cnc is metric in my situation you can use imperial use position definitions will offset the start position but i won't be using it i'm working in the g54 standard setup for my machine let me just change the work area my cnc can move 790 millimeters on both x and y and around 210 millimeters on the z axis the following settings are very important because they might limit some of the settings that we have already made for example the feed rate maximum per minute is the maximum feed rate of the machine if this value is lower than the feed rate that we have set up in the operation the feed rate in the operation will be changed with the maximum value in the case of my machine the maximum speed is 6500 millimeters per minute the default value is the value that will default for any operation using this machine i will leave it just as is i don't care about this the spindle speed minimum and maximum make sure the maximum is set high enough so you won't get into the same problem to be limited you can set a delay after the spindle starts i won't be using this because my setup already has a six seconds delay after issuing the start uh, the spindle start command and i also have a default rp 
RPM spindle speed, which is 15,000. It's okay. Several options here about tool changer. I haven't worked with them because I don't have an ATC machine. My machine is very simple. I just use wrenches to change the cutter head, but I like to change the collet size, which for some reason defaults to 33 meters, which is 33,000 millimeters. I'm not sure what it, this is used for, but I believe it's something regarding collisions. So I will change it to the extra size of the collet on my machine, which is 33 millimeters. Peg curves on sheet is something we are not going to use today. Same with slice model to plywood sheets and same with bus relief. Just looking at the names of these options makes Blender very interesting for a lot of different jobs. I will show you in future videos how to make some very nice things using these options here. After setting up the machine, what you should do is go here to machine presets, press on the plus button and here write a name open source CNC click on OK and from now on whenever I set up a new job, a new cam machine, I can just go here and select it from the list. Don't ask me why it changes everything back 2 meters, so make sure you go to scene and change the length back 2 millimeters. This is the usual behavior when changing the machine. It will leave the metric system, but it will change the length unit from millimeters back to meters. So you go back to the scene and change here for length, select millimeters. Keep in mind to go here whenever something that you do in Blender might change the length units. It happens a lot of times, so it's good to know that you can go to scene and change it from here. Let's go back to render. So now that I have reached the cam machine tab, I've set everything along the route. Now I can go back to the cam operations. I have the operation Seahorse Tray 1. Click on Calculate Path and Export G Code. It will just calculate path. It won't export G Code. It takes some time, as I've told you, it takes somewhere around 2 minutes with the settings that I've made and with the size of the tray. You can find the tray if you want to test how to work with this model that's for certain works in Blender, you might find some STLs that are broken, are too broken to be milled and you have to repair them. If you don't have any experience with Blender, you can download this file from my Patreon account and use it so you can focus on setting all the settings in the cam renderer. One thing that I like in Blender compared to FreeCut is the thing that it shows you some progress. You don't sit in front of, of a machine that does nothing and wait. Maybe sometimes later in two minutes, in two hours, in two days, it will finish the job. You can see some progress here. Sometimes it's, it moves slower, but you can see it and it's almost done. You can see that everything is white because there are so many toolpaths zoom in and you can see some very nice lines one next to the other. Now I can click on the export G-code button and it will generate the file. Well, it doesn't. You might be frustrated because even if you have a file name here, you click on the export G-code button, you simply won't find the file. It probably is somewhere, but you can't find it. To solve this, you have to go to file, save the file that you are working and now click on export G-code again. You will find the opsi horse tree underscore one in the same folder where you have saved the file. After creating the path file, I can go to my CNC and start milling this. Thank you for watching, thank you for following me, don't forget to subscribe and if you want you can follow my Patreon account, there you will find a lot of useful things on FreeCAD, on Blender and also on Fluidency and setting up the entire machine.